short tutorial, I just wanted to go through the procedure of taking those three images and putting them into a software like Photomatix. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do it via the Lightroom plugin, or we can export the images to a folder and then use Photomatix and bring them in manually. Um, so I'll just show you both methods just in case you haven't got the Lightroom plugin. What we see here is my folder that we were working on before in the last lesson and I have three images here highlighted in red. So what I wanted to do is export them to Photomatix. And the best way to probably manage this workflow is to just filter them down and we showed these things here, these attributes before and that was just via the uh, filter bar up here. So that brings that in and out. So, so what we wanted to do is um, use filter by the, the red um, attribute here. So we've got the red there and two stars. So we've got these three images here. If we have the Lightroom plugin installed and we can see if we've got it installed by going into and here, so plugin manager, we can see that here, and we've got the these are all the addings I've got, and export to Photomatix is there. When you install Photomatix, it'll give you a little checkbox to say you want to install the Lightroom plugin, and you can do it from there. So what the Lightroom plugin does is, if you right-click these images, you will get the the export to uh, Photomatix. Here it is here. Photomax Pro, so that's what that gives you. The other way is to export to files and then import them in via the program itself. So this just is a little handy little workflow tip to have that Lightroom plugin installed. So before I actually export them, I'm going to just scale these up a bit. I'm just going to check them for any, to get the most out of these images. I've got three images here. I could probably extend the dynamic range a bit more by altering the first the first image and the third image. So what I want to do here is make sure in the darkest image, which is this one here, I want to go into the develop module, which is up here, or hit the D key. And I just want to zoom in and make sure we haven't got any blown highlights. So I'll zoom in there. There doesn't look to be any there. We do see a bit of CA here, chromatic aberration, so I'll address that as well. And we'll do the same sort of diligence looking in the shadows of the, the third image. We can do that by clicking down here. You see down here we've got the three images in our timeline. In our thumbnail, sorry. We can go to the first image there and we can look at the shadows here. And you can see the shadows here. There's a lot of detail there. So what we can do, we can bring the exposure up a tad. But most importantly, we can up, up the shadows there to bring out that there. This does introduce noise, so what we're doing is some noise reduction. We'll probably work on this image and do the noise reduction on this image, make it look good and then apply that to all the other images. So I just wanted to make sure that there's details in those shadows. You can even bring your blacks up a bit if you wish. You don't want to go too far. It introduces a bit of noise. While we're in close, we'll switch over to the noise. It's in the details. We want to reduce some noise. It's in the details. So expand that down there. We can get a little preview here. We can click on here to get a preview of where we are. So we click on that and we go into here. And it should update here, I believe. Maybe not. There we go there. So we click in there. So it's a bit tricky how that works. I would have thought it would follow live, but it doesn't. It scrolls around here. So we really want to look at this area here, which is click out again, it's, it's about here. So we're looking at the same thing on the big screen and the little screen here. We're in here close looking at the noise of the image and the chromatic abrasion, so we want to address those things. But the film strip view down here, we're looking at the, the lightest exposure here. And if you hold the, hover the mouse over, see that little update comes up. So I shot that at 200 ISO, 1.6 seconds, f7.1 aperture and 18 mil. So that's a handy little tool tip to know about. But back into here, look at the noise here. Traditionally, um, we don't want to go overboard with the noise reduction, but with Photomatix and other HDR software, it does introduce a lot of noise. So we want to really bring in images that have a lot of noise gone. So I usually crank up that to about the mid, up to about 30. 
can see it here now sometimes it doesn't update I usually zoom in and zoom out but you can actually see it in here so you can see what it's done here I'm looking at one-to-one -one view you can see that they're one-to-one -one. sometimes I'll go in at two-to-one just to have a look it does exaggerate the noise a bit but we just want to make sure that there's none there not not none but not we don't want to sacrifice detail for noise so if we go up too far you can see what happens here see that it just clobbers all the detail so if we go somewhere around 30 it's quite a bit of detail there it's better than having there so there's without any noise reduction and there's about 30 percent 35 percent now the other thing that affects noise this is is the sharpening generally I like to sharpen too much because we're doing it in post, but you can see that introducing more noise. So I sort of keep it pretty close there. Now you have got these options for masking as well. That what masking does is is actually you have it up high, it will only sharpen edges. Now you, you can see it's sort of doing edges there, but the best way to see all this, and this goes for most of these sliders in Lightroom, if you hold down your Alt or yeah, your alt key I believe it is and go through there it gives you a black and white preview of what actually is being sharpened if I only want to sharpen edges I can do that there so that's what's actually been sharpened and then if I hold the alt key down again I can see the amount here so you can see the it's quite a bit better view to look at you know distracted by color the radius will do the same thing so these are all different commands you can see what you can get here and the detail again you can see what you're doing the other one is color noise I always just have that at 50 so there we go it's no big uh, difference when you look at it in the far away view uh, the, the, the fit to screen view but in one to one view you can see up here click that it's quite quite sharp still and haven't lost detail what I'm going to address here is the chromatic aberration. Now we can see that here quite clearly. It's these edges here. Now that this is a great candidate for, for chromatic aberration. It's a pretty hard to avoid this because we're at the edge of the frame where most lens refraction. What chromatic aberration is that a light coming through at different angles um, causes different layers the red green and blue not to line up correctly on sharp contrasty edges. So that's what chromatic aberration is. So it's a lot less prominent or hardly at all in the middle of the lens but more prominent when you um, are towards the edge of the the frame and more prominent when light meets dark now how to remove it we're lucky nowadays that we've got great tools to do that we can use um, the Lightroom 4 and I think 3 had it built in so but 4 has got some more advanced features but we just want the simple features here to get rid of that we do want to get rid of all this chromatic aberration beforehand before we take it into photomatics. So it's actually found in the lens correction section. Now you'll notice in this lens correction there's a couple of things in here. So what I tend to do, each lens has its own profile in Lightroom and has its own chromatic aberration settings. Someone's done the work for you, so your lenses are all there. Most most lenses are listed nowadays, and you can I think you can even update and download some more to the list. So remember, your chromatic aberration and your distortion is all um, specific to your lenses. And so we'll just go through and look at this profile here. We're just going to enable profiles here on the left. I'll just move all this over here so you can see it all live. So we've got that part of the image there. We enable the profile immediately it's found that I've got the Nikon um, that lens there the 18 to 200 mil lens and yeah so that's the profile there but it's enabled it for lens distortion at this stage so you'll see that in the big view all it's done is see how it's just sort of does fix that uh, distortion so that's enabled that there but if I do check color that's where the chromatic aberration comes in by default it's not selected and if you click this magic button here it nearly disappears completely and look that's probably acceptable for me we could go in and 
use these tools to expand the range and things like that you can see it changing that there on the purple edge and the same with the other blue edge you can see it just briefly sort of changing it but look the default settings are fine it's a good idea to do it because you don't know where they're going to turn up and again like noise chromatic aberration also goes in and affects your merged HDR what we want to do now is go back to library view or grid view which we can go hit this button up here library or hit G G will take us back and you can see we've got the three images here now this is the image I've been working on uh, it's got all the alterations I want and I want to pass them on across here a few ways you can do it we've got all the images here we want to select them all to apply all the settings from this image to these ones so what we do is hold down control or command key and click on the other two but we see there's a slight difference in tone here this one's whiter this is the prominent image these are the ones that are also selected but they're gonna these are the like the parent these are the childs they're part of a group or whatever you do to this one we're going to pass on to here so if we move them around they're still part of a group but this is the prominent image this one here so we're going to synchronize settings down here the synchronize settings so we've made alterations to this one in lens correction and noise reduction. We want to pass that to the other ones. So we synchronize. Now in synchronize, this goes through all the things we set before in the develop module. Now by default, you might have check none or check all. There might be all checked, might be a variety of things. I start off with check none and then select what we changed. Now we did change that one there. We brought those shadows up. So in this case, we don't want to sync that across all of them because it will make these shadows darker. So we don't want to change, use, change that basic exposure information. We want to keep that the same. Each one's individual in that case, so they retain their own settings. If there's any highlight detail we want to bring back here, bump up the exposure. And if we applied that to all of them with this on like that, we would pass it across here, making this one darker, which we didn't want to do. We actually want to make this area lighter. We did that manually in this image. What we want to do now is not pass that on. We want to synchronize across these three images the stuff that's generic. The stuff that's generic is things like the color luminance noise reduction in there and any lens corrections. They're usually the main candidates here. Another one that I didn't go through here, but another one I would use is spot removal if I've got any spots that if you're on a tripod and you've got some um, spots there like um, sensor dust you can use spot removal on one frame and then sync it across the other so we synchronize them across like that you'll see them just update quite quickly and they're all ready to go so they're basically ready now to go to the next step which is to go into photomatics we have these three images selected now we can just to show you how to select them again um, how to vary your view so we've got the three of them selected here they're selected because we're in the red uh, we've got the red filter on if I turn that off we'll see all of the images in that folder I only wanted these these are the three I'm using to filter them down again two stars or because they've got, or got two or red filter them down so I've got them there I can change the scale of them by changing the thumbnails here they're also down here so here we want to export them so we right click and what we're doing here is exporting them to Photomatix Pro. As explained before, this is when you install Photomatix, it gives you a little checkbox to install the Lightroom plugin. This is the Lightroom plugin, and that's where it comes into your workflow. Okay. Now, by default here, I just leave the settings mostly as you've got them. I do show some sometimes by default it hasn't got this check, the 32-bit. I do save that on and I do change the name here I might add an underscore HDR in there so it helps with sorting later I'll make sure that's 16-bit uh, I definitely have this this is one of the strengths of Photomatix the, the, uh, then they recommend having that the selective deghosting there's different ways to align images by matching features or the horizontal shift and, and vertical shift is great for when you're on tripods handheld things um, there's no real horizon things like that uh, matching features work seems to work a bit better again reduce noise i've never sort of really experimented too much with changing which exposure to reduce noise on all source images is fine and 
reduce chromatic aberration again. We did that in Lightroom, but again, just to make sure it's okay. Uh, stack with first uh, selected photo, I don't actually check that. I don't sort of have much need for stacking photos in Lightroom. I know some people do, but I find it a feature. I, but, you know, if you want to do that, that's where it is, if you want to stack them with the original. All right, now we hit export and we wait. So after the export to Photomatix, we will automatically switch across to Photomatix, which is right here. And you'll get a screen looking like this. You can make it larger if you wish, bring the corners, things like that. It's a bit clunky how it is. Be warned, this is not um, how the image is finally going to look. This is an intermediate step where... And there's another intermediate step as well before we finally see our results. So don't get disheartened saying something's gone wrong. Very important to understand that. This is the step where we we deghost things. Deghosting means removing um, elements that may have moved in the four seconds where the three exposures were taken, or the five seconds, ten seconds, whatever it was. So things like trees, birds, cars, people, water reflections in this case. We may choose to deghost them, which means we use one of the three images as the major image that will dominate the final output. It is a bit clunky, it may need a graphics pen here, but you actually draw on it and it makes this little line here. So we want to just check what this would look like. We can zoom in a little bit if we want, just to check how things are going a bit closer. We want to check how this looks like deghosted. So we go over to here to preview deghosting. We can see that it's sharpen that reflection up. You can see it here in particularly. Uh, can we zoom in there a bit more? Try to move in a bit more. So you can see it's tidied up without losing too much. When it's selected here, we can actually right click it and remove selection. That's how we get rid of it, which we can set another exposure. Now we can set the middle one. It's chosen the lightest one here. Now I'm tipping this will be too dark. Let's see it. Well, not really. It's not too bad. Let's just try this one up here, the top one. Yeah, so it's not much, much difference really. But definitely want to remove that. I want to see what it looks like going the whole length of the pool. I just want to be consistent. So I'll zoom out and I'll drag that section. You know, this is a bit tricky. You really want to get in there closely and get that, all that reflection. And go through it. I might go through here and just have a look. Preview deghosting. Again, you can see what's going to happen here. If we zoom in here, just re return here to zoom in. You have to zoom in. Preview to ghosting. You can see what's done there. It's made that darker there. So to be consistent, we'd have to go right along there. So we'll add that little section see what that does. So to be consistent, we'll just pull that in there. Oops. Close enough. I shouldn't have it all. There you go. Quite happy with the darker selection. We've chosen this exposure, the middle one. And note that you can set different um, exposures for different sections. But I think by default it goes by the uh, last one you set. Okay, so now we're ready to go to the next stage. So we hit OK there. After you've said OK there, we go to the next stage, which is the 30-bit. 32-bit preview stage. Uh, you can see that here. It does look very washed out and dark. And if we had the luxury of a 32-bit display, we could actually see what the image in all its details. 32 bits is so much more um, dynamic range and color range than what we're currently using in 16-bit that monitors and printers can't display it yet. You can view um, the HDR viewer here. Now what this is, is actually going to, sh where the cursor is going to show you the detail that's actually in there. So I'll just move it over closer to the image just to show you. But this is actually showing you the details it's captured. So it's got all those tones. 
so you, it shows you, I'm not sure, what the, it does show you the range it's caught. You can see lightest to darkest, it's caught all that. It's got that highlight there, and it's got the mid tones and shadows. So, wherever the, it's showing you wherever the crosshair is, what it's got, what the information it's got. This foreground we were worried about, where these rocks are, you can see. See how that's how it works there in that mid tone there. It's saying, yeah, I caught that, but I've lost the highlight, but on the edge. But when you move over to it, go to the highlight, it's there. So it's just showing you the range it's got. It's showing you the, basically the middle what it's got in the middle tone, so it's got that there in the middle tone there, but it's also, if you move back here, it's got the highlight. I'll close that off. If we've got some complex selections there in the ghosting stage and, and um, we've got 12 images, we may have, or even five images that we've stacked together and so we may want to revisit that again because the next stage is the tone mapping and there's so much variation there you may want multiple air outputs and you may want to paint them in on different layers later on in, later on so to get back to that stage in your workflow rather than going through and going through the whole process that we have up until now and the reason why i show that 32-bit step is this sole reason here is where we can save this image this stage off it's going to be a big file but we can stay save it off so that when we go back and say, well, we want to tone map that again. We want, we like the clouds in this one. We like the water in this one. We like the the rocks in this one. We want to combine the three. We can go back to this 32-bit file and work from there and go straight into tone mapping, export the one we want, and then come back, back to this 32-bit stage, back, back to the same point again. We only have to do it once. What we do here is we go up to File, Save As. Bear with me two secs. Let's navigate through this. And we're in this folder. So this is the folder I'm working at the moment. Now, just down the bottom of the file formats, important to look at this. By default it goes as HDR format, which is fine for Photomatix. You can bring it back in. Open XR is good for Photoshop and Photomatix, but not good for Lightroom. Floating point is great for all three. It is a larger file and it will warn you about that. So I save it in that one. I also changed the extension. I put an underscore 32 bit, something like that, and maybe even underscore HDR, just so that I can sort of find it. Just me, just a bit more reference to where to find it in folders, in Lightroom, and in where are the other places in Photoshop. Save it. This is the warning I was told you about. Just save it anyway. So now we're ready to do the tone mapping or fusion as well, and that's this button here. So we just click on that and it goes straight into this section here. All right, so this can be a very daunting uh, to look at first up, but just look at the interface here. We've got a few things we can note or make note of. We've got tone mapping up here, and we've got exposure fusion. There's two different things here. Just realize that there's two different ways to combine the images. These are all your sliders for tone mapping or your sliders for image fusion or exposure fusion. So these are all your sliders on the left and the right are presets. You click on that and that's the default. Again, you can zoom in to see what detail you want. Or you can use this handy tool here which is a little preview. So that will show you the detail. When you click on it, I think you just don't mind click. It shows you how the image will finally come out. And you can see what's happened here. We had that where we deghosted. We had that little, we had to select this area manually and it's gone. And if you look at that closely, there's a bit of a transition there we might like. Let's have a look where we want it. It's good here. A little bit of noise came in. You can see that there. So we may need to reduce that noise. Which is this, you'll see. When we go through each one of these presets, we won't go through them all, but you'll see some have more noise than the others. So that's a good little tool to have that. And then we can, if we even update the, the setting here, I believe it'll update. And you can see that there. And you can see now, we go back to this problem area. It's not quite as bad. So these, all these presets are, it's really bad in that one, a difference. You can see the settings change over here. So just look at the strength here. You can see that change, it even changed the exposure fusion there. So these are presets. This is a tone map one. 
um, 50% there. So that's quite different to this one, 100% of strength saturation. Saturation is different there for exposure. So each one is different setting. The way we save it is down here. Save and re-import. Re-import is back into Lightroom. You can see there by the little pop-up. So I won't go through every details. Okay, so we'll just select something here. Um, softs are quite good for realistic looking ones. Uh, just check the detail in here. I don't mind that, I don't mind it a bit flat. See how the chromatic abrasions come back in a bit more? Here we go, here we can see we've got peaking here on the uh, shadows. Oh, no, not really. You can always chat, adjust white points and things like that. Um, yeah, so we'll go with that setting, something like that, and we'll save and re-import. Okay, so here we are back in Lightroom. Just note that this is the order. You can capture time would be the time taken. This HDR photo takes the stamp from, looks like the middle exposure. Or, yeah, and um, keeps the excess data for the, that image. So let's just have a look at it, have a bit pan around it, just make sure things look okay. Now I did just discover a couple of little shortcuts that help with this process of uh, getting rid of chromatic abrasion and that's the old friend the the alt key and the sliders so you can see here I've got the alt key pressed you can see it changing reset to fringe but we don't want to do that we want to see how it shows you what it's going to do alt key here let's see what it does here same, same sort of thing alright just thought I'd mention that one so back here you can see the final image um, well, not final image, but the image that we are at now. We can also, we now we can do all sorts of little tweaks. So these are the three images here. Now we're going to show you the workflow without uh, the Lightroom plugin. So we've got these three images that were prepared earlier. So what I would tend to do is export them into a, a folder and then the subfolder inside the folder I'm working on called test down here. So I'm going to export these files into there and then I'm going to open up Photomatix, open that up and then point it to there and grab those three files. So I'll name them and, and organize them such that it's easy for me to get to those three files. I'll use TIFF format to keep the resolution. So as long as those three are selected, we right click again, export. And just click choose the top one, export, because we're going to set up a preset here. I've got lots of these are again presets that I've made up that will make a new one. I'm going to use up here, choose the same folder as original. So we're in the test folder, but we're going to make a little subfolder called HDR. So they're going to be in a subfolder, they'll end up here in a folder called HDR underneath there. No need to rename them. Important to change this to TIFF. Important to make sure it's 16 bit. We don't want to lose quality. Important that the space is color RG, uh, pro photo RGB. And don't worry about compressing it. Do not resize, just do it like that. You could resize if you want to do smaller ones. You want to test panoramas. I don't know. You could use resize just to speed up the workflow because these are quite large images, but we're just going to do this one here. Don't worry about sharpening, turn that off. So we're creating raw files and make sure your watermarking's off and post-processing do nothing okay so because this is a, um, a template i can use again this can always be used whatever folder i am i can make three files and five files and export them as tiffs ready for photomatics i'm going to make this a preset look up something i click on all the time and it'll just go export them straight away without me having to type all this in and make sure i check all those boxes are right so we just add down here and here in Plugin Manager, we click Add, and we'll call this Photomatics. We'll put in the User Presets folder, Create. So it's there now. So if I go to one of these, it's gone. See all those things have changed. I can always go back to here. So it's all ready to go. So I export those, and that'll come up here. You can see the progress down here, up there. Sorry, it'll export those. We've exported those images to a folder within the working folder we were we had our original images in. 
So I'll switch back to Photomatix or open up Photomatix. So I've got Photomatix here. So what we want to do here is we want to load bracketed photos, the top one here. So if you hover over it, it tells you what we want to do, uh, what, what to do. So it comes up with this little folder um, where you can browse. Make sure that's checked. That's the step that we showed you before where we save that to a 32-bit file for later on working, come back to this stage so we don't have to go through this process again. At this stage we want to browse and find those files so I know where they were on my computer. Here we go. So notice I put them in a folder called HDR. There they are there. So they're the three files. And here's the three files and you can actually see them there. Well, TIFF, you can see they're quite large, you know, nearly 100 meg each one of them, quite large, so we want to load them in. Again, make sure that box is checked and click OK. Here's the same screen. I don't know why they didn't make it quite the same as the Lightroom plugin, but it's pretty much the same. We've got the noise reduction there. It's got a percentage slider. Uh, look, this pretty much leave this as default and properly process. So we'll let that go through. Okay, we're at this stage now. We were with the uh, same stage with the Photomatix uh, Lightroom plugin. We're at the same stage now, so we've got to the same point. We basically go through to the end like we did in the first part of the video. We would select our deghosting areas, things like that. But I did want to show you the last step where you want to save it. It is a bit different because it's different doesn't ex export straight back into Lightroom. There's a little bit of a trick to uh, see the image again. Okay, here's the 32-bit file. Again, we would save that under File, Save As. I won't do it at this stage, but because we've already got one. So we tone map it. So the second one, so it goes through. We choose one of these presets, for example, and we'll choose something a bit different. We'll choose a monochrome, even. Okay, now we need to go process down here. Notice it's not save and re-import. There we go, we process it. This doesn't actually save at this stage, it does. It doesn't save back into Lightroom, you have to tell it. Now, you can do all these things here. I just leave it as it is. This is all stuff that's done in Lightroom or Photoshop. Don't change anything there. Now, this stage, I don't believe it's saved. So, we go save. We just want to make sure it's saved in our folder. I've just had hiccups with this before. Just make sure you manually save it back to where you are. There and there. So we'll save it in there. See, it puts time mapped in there. So we know it's a different file name. I'll put HDR there anyway. Save. Okay, so that's saved now. If I go back to Lightroom, let's see what Lightroom does. Go back to grid mode. Okay, it doesn't appear there yet. Let's turn the filters off. Does it appear there yet? Added order, let's just zoom out just to make sure it doesn't appear there yet. Design, it should be there. Why isn't it there? There's a little setting called synchronized folders over here. Just picks up anything new that's coming to those folders or the ones above, below. If I hit that, it'll import the five images. Now the ones that, will, if you follow this whole video, these ones will be the 32-bit HDR files as well. It says five, but yes, it is five. So we, oh yes, we did the three copies as well. So it's put all that in. So if we look at our folder structure now, the raws is the original files. So here we go with all the files that we've created here. So that's sort of a, a bit of an idea of how to get to this stage using the exported raw files into Photomatix and using two different methods where we have Photomatix plugin and one where we don't and we're opening up the files via Photomatix. Okay, thank you very much for that.